The reading is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the path of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Sounds like there are some good conversations going on out there. So uh, Katie is now going to share with us. And Katie didn't know that she was going to be preaching until yesterday. Friday. Uh, but Friday. Friday. Okay, Friday. Uh, but God knew you were going to be preaching. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, Katie is someone who hears the voice of God really clearly. So really excited to hear uh, what she has today. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, let's pray for her before she starts. Lord, thank you for the message that you've given to Katie, and we pray that you fill her with peace, and we pray that you give her all the words to say, and pray for all of us that we have open hearts to receive uh, this word that Katie's going to share. Amen. Amen. Kia ora koutou, call Katie Tōku Ingwa. Uh, it is an unexpected pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, as uh, Victoria mentioned, uh, Sarah was due to be uh, preaching this morning, um, and so our thoughts and prayers are with them uh, as they're in Ōtautahi with the family. Um, a little bit about me. Ko Nathan, tōku hoarangatira. I am married to Nathan. Uh, he preached here uh, a few weeks ago. You might remember him. He's the tall, dark, and handsome one. <laughs> Uh, we have two children, uh, Luca, who is five, and Simeon, our son is three. Uh, we go to St. Peter's in Gonville, near where we live. We have been in Wanganui now for five years. We came down from Auckland uh, to help support the youth work here in the parish, which is a role that we loved and we now miss. Uh, my formal training is in counselling and in youth work. And the job that I do now has nothing to do with either of those things. Uh, I uh, started in the parish office admin team at the beginning of last year, 2022, in a temporary capacity uh, to cover some medical leave, and I never left. (laughs) So uh, my role now is, uh, it's morphed and changed over the last 18 months, but uh, I am the operations coordinator for the parish. That means that I look after systems, Uh, I think about how things work and how we can streamline and make things better, and I look after our communications, um, our website, our app, things like that. And in addition to all that, I am Billy and Caleb's assistant. So my job is a, woo! uh, (laughs) My job is a gift and I love it. Uh, It's a real privilege to be on the team and to serve the parish in that way. So I'm a bit of an ad break from your uh, sermon series that you're in at the moment. Uh, You have been journeying uh, with Jesus through ordinary times. So I'm really sorry to report, I will not be preaching from Leviticus, Numbers, or Deuteronomy this morning. (laughs) Um, It's actually funny that I'm up here at all. Um, I, for those of you who know me well, or maybe don't know me very well. I am quite a controlling sort of a person, uh, and I have been invited to preach before and have declined the opportunity. However, uh, we bumped into Sarah and Craig. Nathan and I were out for coffee on Friday on our Sabbath um, at Little Curious Bagels, amazing. And uh, uh, bumped into Sarah and Craig there and heard the news uh, that uh, Craig's mum's health had taken a significant turn. And... uh, 
they were in the process of trying to decide when to head down to Ōtautahi um, and whether they go together or separate, all those sorts of things. And uh, we spent some time with them. Nate and I jumped in the car. We made our way to Ginza's to do some very important furniture browsing slash shopping. Uh, and on that drive, uh, we both just um, were sort of prompted to release Craig and Sarah uh, from their roles this morning. Um, so later that afternoon, I was uh, reading in Psalms, and I came across Psalm 8, which is just epic. Like, it's just an epic psalm. And can I encourage you to put this on your list of scriptures to memorize? Because I just, it's very good. Uh, and um, it was actually before um, I'd heard back from Craig about their plans, um, I felt Jesus say to me, talk about the Kairos circle and talk about Psalm 8. And now here we are. So, the Kairos Circle, uh, many of you will have heard teaching on the Kairos Circle before. Many of you won't have. Kei uh, The Kairos Circle is, uh, um, I just believe this morning that there's actually something in it for all of us, uh, and myself included. And uh, the, the Kairos Circle has been probably the discipleship model that has had the most impact on my journey with Jesus. And so I just encourage you, if this is helpful, this is your moment to grab a piece of paper or your phone or whatever to take notes. Um, I was going to volunteer the coloring pieces of paper in the kids area, but those have gone. So like your newsletter, anything, um, just if my brain's a sieve, I have to write stuff down. So if that's helpful for you, this is your moment to grab something. So, the Kairos Circle is a discipleship model by 3DM. It's 3D uh, movements, or they used to be called three-dimensional ministries. It's also called the Learning Circle. And as followers of Jesus, we believe that God, who created the universe, desperately wants to speak to us. And the Kairos Circle is a tool for how to listen to what God has to say. So the key scripture here is Mark 1, 15. The time has come, Jesus said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. There are three things I want to draw to your attention here in this passage. The first is the time has come. So there are a couple of words in the Greek that translate to our English word for time. The first is chronos, which is where we get our word chronological. So that's successive time, yesterday, today, tomorrow. It's the time that you'll find on your watch. Versus kairos, which is a moment, a significant moment in time. It's like an event or an opportunity. Now, these kairos moments can be positive or negative. They can be big or small. So moments like the day you started school or graduated, the day you got married or had a baby, or it could be things like a song you heard on the radio or a conversation you had with someone. Uh, that those times when scripture just leaps off the page or uh, perhaps a scene from a movie, something that stood out to you. The second thing to highlight here, the kingdom of God has come near. So this is about the kingdom of God breaking into a person's life where God speaks into what is happening in our day-to-day -day life. And thirdly, there are two ways we respond to God breaking into our lives, and that is by repenting and believing. Now, the word repent is often used in, um, well, is relating to repenting from our sin, but it's not as simple as just saying, I'm sorry. To repent means to change your thinking, to turn in a different direction. And then to believe is when we act as if something is true. So, for example, if I think this chair's going to hold me up, I'm probably going to sit on it. But if I didn't think the chair was going to hold me up, I wouldn't sit on it. So we do this all day, every day. We believe something is true and then we act accordingly. What we see in Scripture is Jesus teaching his disciples in everyday moments. So two guys were at their nine to five fishing. Jesus walking along the water says, hey, come follow me. 
They're having a conversation later about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And Jesus talks about servant leadership. Then there was that time they all forgot their lunch. And Jesus, <laughs> thanks Tubbs, Jesus feeds the 5,000. These were everyday moments where Jesus decided to speak and teach his disciples. And we believe that God is still speaking today. And if God is speaking, we need to be listening. The question is, how do we do this? So, Nate and I have had a full-on couple of weeks at home. We had a couple of flatmates move in recently. Then we had a whole week where Nathan and both children were off sick. Um, and then we had a week where we had something on every day on top of our usual work. And in amongst all of this, we're renovating our house. <laughs> and so two of our bedrooms are now not available. So our five bedroom house has now become very full. And Nathan and I are currently bunking on our children's floor. So safe to say, I've been feeling quite exhausted. And I noticed last week sometime how much Netflix I had been watching. And I sat and reflected and realized that every spare moment I had had, I had crawled into my bed on the floor, put my headphones on, and escaped into the abyss that is Netflix. And I had this moment, this Kairos moment, where I thought, how is this forming me? And if I'm the kind of person who keeps choosing to escape into Netflix, who will I become? And then I had this moment where I was like, hang on, when was the last time that I practiced memorizing scripture? And in contrast to Netflix, how might that form me? Now, I'm gonna level with you. I then kept watching Netflix. <laughs> but Jesus, was trying to invite me into something deeper. So that in quiet moments, rather than movie quotes coming to my mind, scripture comes to my mind. Here, God is trying to break into my every day and speak. The question is, was I prepared to listen, repent, change my thinking, and believe, act as if that is now true? Okay, so to remember how we do this, there is a shape, and it is a circle. So, we're going along in time, chronos, you see the little person walking across the top? And then we have this moment, a kairos moment, that happens, big or small, positive or negative, and we can process that moment using the kairos circle. So there are two halves to this circle, on the right-hand side is the repent side, where we change our thinking. And there are three steps on that side. The first is observe. What happened? What stood out? What did I notice? Now, just as a side note, your emotions are really, really helpful at this point in the circle. Because our emotions are really helpful flags to say, oh, hang on, something's happened. Slow down, pay attention, observe what's going on, why did I react like that? Things like that. Pay attention to your emotions. The second is reflect. Why is this moment significant and why now? Is this a pattern? Has this message come up for me before? A helpful exercise here is the five whys, which is literally where you say, why did this happen? And then you ask why four more times to get to the root of what's going on. It's a thing, Google it. Okay. <laughs> Thirdly, we discuss. We take it to a friend, a mentor, or our small group. And for those of you who are in our small groups and follow our material, this is actually built into the small group material where we can talk about, discuss our kairos moments. Bringing it to others and saying it out loud helps us further clarify our reflection. Others can input into our learning, and it can then actually be shared learning. So the discussion part is really helpful uh, for brainstorming further what God might be saying. 
So for me, I noticed the repetitive Netflix. I reflected on this as a pattern and then pondered existentially who I was becoming. I actually later discussed this in therapy, exploring the how did I get to this point, what's going on in my wider life. And I had a sense that God was saying to me, as you can probably guess, less Netflix, more scripture. The first three steps of the circle help us change our thinking and clarify the answer to the question, what is God saying? The second half of the circle is all about belief, acting as if that is now true. So firstly, we plan. We put a plan in motion. Okay, what am I going to do? When? Where? How? Be specific. Using your small group or your friend to discuss this is really helpful because they can drive, help you drive to detail that gets to the heart of what God is saying. We put a plan in place. Then we ask to be held to account for that plan. So we get someone to say, hey, Victoria, in a week, in two weeks, could you check in with me and could you ask this question? Ask me how this is going. And then finally, we act. We actually go and do it. So for me, I felt like God was saying, less Netflix, more scripture. And so a plan that I've come up with is, that, is to commit memorizing a piece of scripture in a certain period of time. So, I plan to memorize Psalm 8 in the next month. And now you can all keep me accountable. (laughs) And whenever you next see me, ask me, hey, how's Psalm 8? (laughs) And then I need to actually go and memorize it, so I have something to say when you ask me. So as we go through these three steps, we are asking, we are answering the question, what am I going to do about it? What's God saying? What am I going to do about it? which when we follow this process, changes the course of our life into a new direction. Your life has been changed because God spoke and you listened and then did something about it. So we're going to have a practice. Woo-hoo. Before there's a practice, are there any questions anyone has about this before we practice? Great. Okay, so we're going to do what's called Electio Divina, which just means, uh, what's it called? Divine reading. Uh, So we're going to read Psalm 8, um, and by divine reading, I'm going to read Psalm 8 three times. The first time I read it, I want you just to potentially close your eyes or just like let it wash over you. Just be in the passage. The second time I read it, I want you to just notice anything that jumps out at you, a word or a phrase. And then the third time I read it, just asking God, hey God, what's that about? What have you got to say to me today? Once we've done that, I'll get you to turn to your neighbor or the twos and threes around you and just have a discussion. What stood out to you? What are your reflections? What might God might say? And then begin to put together a plan and start formulating some questions that you can ask each other. Now, can I suggest that you write this down? because you won't remember otherwise. Uh, Cool. Is that all good? We're going to do that. So if you want to close your eyes, this is your moment. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I invite you to turn to your neighbor, have a conversation about what God might be saying. Kia ora koutou. I hope your conversations were fruitful. Can I encourage you, um, what I love, hi son. We are family on mission. Here is my three year old. <laughs> Um, can I encourage you, what I love about the Kairos Circle is this can be used in small group for sure and in uh, a deep, like when you listen, every sermon you hear, you should be, can be listening for that Kairos moment. What is God saying? What am I noticing? But it can be used in conversations with your children. And uh, we use this in our youth group all the time. I just, um, I love it because it can be used everywhere because God is everywhere and he wants to speak to us. So to land, I am going to pray, um, and then the worship team is going to do our final song. Thank you, Jesus, that you love us, and that you love us enough to want a relationship with us, and thank you for speaking to us. God, we are listening. Jesus, I pray blessing on this group of people, God, that they would hear your voice this week. They would have a sense of you speaking. That they would have opportunities to discuss that with others and then make a plan to follow where you're leading, Jesus. We want to be more like you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.